Hi, my name is Christian. This is my 2017 Infiniti Q50. Hi, my name is Curtis, and this is my 2015 Infiniti Q50 S Hybrid. Hi, I'm Morris. This is my 2015 Infiniti Q50A. And I'm James. On this episode, we're going to be comparing these three Infinities. So jump on in, because we are going to take you for a ride. Okay, so off we go. Let's roll. So when did you pick up this Infinity? Uh, well, it's 2020. Well, like three, four. Yeah, three, four years ago. Okay. Uh, I want to say around. I think around May or March, around there, okay. I can't remember exact set. So, what were you were you looking for specifically for the Q50, or were you looking for something in this category for car for as cars go? No, actually, I was just shopping, just looking around. I was gonna get a Lexus. Okay. But I'm assuming the IS. Yes, correct. Uh, the IS, yes. Uh, okay. I was well, looking around. Did you? So, did you like this car just better than the IS, or just you found a better deal? What? what did you no, I actually test total. Uh, what? I, test drive the Alexis which it was everything was perfect but and, you know, I saw this car now just peeked inside now just seen everything that, that has you know two you have navigation you have a screen so you have two screens actually yeah inside. I see that you've got two yeah. are these both touch screens Okay, so it's got now. No, they actually don't. No, sorry, they are both touch screens, yes. Okay, so you got yeah, double are. touch screens. Double First, touch the infotainment system was the selling point on this car versus the Lexus. Well, not just that, just uh, this was a turbo. Okay, okay. okay so Lexus turbo. had the, it was, I guess it's the IS350 is what you're Correct. looking at? Yes, And that's a naturally aspirated motor. Yes. Versus this is the three liter turbo. Correct. Twin turbo. Mm -hmm. Correct? Twin turbo. So it's a twin turbo yeah. V6 three liter motor. 300 horsepower? Yes. Similar yes, torque? Mm hmm. And it's definitely got a little bit of pep, which yes, I sir. like, which uh, is kind of something that I think just about everybody's going to. Everybody's doing either small, double, two small turbos or twin scroll turbo. Correct. And uh, because of having that low end, plus you can lower your displacement, which means you get better fuel economy. So if I drive this for here just to work, probably about five gallons a, a week. Five gallons a week. So you're using about a gallon a day, yeah. and your round trip is what, 15 miles, 20 miles? No, no, my, I'm, I'm only about not even that far, about 10, about 10. Okay, yeah. so you're using, you're you're probably running 18. Correct. Yeah. MPG yeah. theoretically. Theoretically, yes. Okay. Basically, you have a pretty handsome interior. The build quality is, is pretty nice. Um, but clearly, you take care of it. So I can tell it's been. Oh yeah. It's been taken care of, and that's one of the things that. A lot of people don't realize what product are you using, Armor Roll? Correct, Armor Roll. Yeah, here's the thing I've had BMWs for years, and all I have to do is Armor Roll, and they are fine. That's right, that's and it. My Roadster is a convertible, which gets a ton of sun. Mm -hmm. Every couple months, just put a coat of Armor Roll, and it looks brand new. Brand new, brand new. exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. It's, that's huge for mm -hmm. black cars. Yes, yeah. so obviously. Usually, yes. <laughs> yeah, maintaining black cars, if you've owned man's black cars, you know that it's black horrible. cars are a pain in the butt. That's why I refuse to get black cars. Right. Now on. I think it's my last black car. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> it's comfortable. You ride it. You, it when you turn take, turn corners, it, it takes you where you want to go. You don't have to really adjust too much. You know, uh, it's just comfortable. You know, I had different cars. I like a Lexus. I had a BMW too. You know, I, I love BMWs. It's just this this steering wheel, everything that comes with the car, you can just throw and they just go. Where so you, you like the feedback go. you're getting. Yeah. So that's what you're good yes, at. That's, that's something that. You know, most car companies have gone to, especially the luxury brand, have gone to electric steering. Yeah. And the challenge with electric steering is the feedback. And I right. have a 2007 C430 SI that has from some of the early electric steering, and it is weird. It is. And I'm used to the rack and pinions. A bunch mm -hmm. of cars have rack and pinions. I'm used to the feedback there. Now, they claim that like some of the higher end companies have better feedback, but I can instantly tell this is not electric no, steering, no, which is exactly. which is a good thing because yeah, you're, you're in control. It, it takes more space, but yeah. you get that you get an idea of what the car is up to. Correct, and that's something that you have to get really you have to get a really nice car, a really expensive car to get good electric steering. Right, and that's something that for people who are enthusiasts who want to go fast, that feedback is really important. It is. Not just knowing what the car is doing when you're in the middle of a corner or you get that chassis feedback is you get 
a better, you're more connected to the car. And that's why something like, I'm a big manual transmission guy, and as good as automatics are gonna get, they're never gonna give no. you a sense of satisfaction and the feedback and the connectivity with the car. And that's something that, things, something as simple as rack and pinion steering versus electric makes a huge difference. So, this car seems to corner pretty well. I do like the feedback. Um, I'm going at a decent tick through some windy roads, and it's very stable, it's very comfortable, and it's quiet. Yes, exactly, it's quiet. Very quiet, so that's that's very nice. That's so, a, a road trip, yes. this is a great road trip, road trip car, exactly. right? Yes. Now, does it have a, speaking of road trips, does it have a spare in the back? Yes, oh yes. So it does have a spare. How about the interior? Looks pretty Looks standard pretty, fare. Yeah. You got a big center stack, very akin to Cadillac, because Cadillac has that big right, center stack, right, which yeah. looks old, awful now because it's aged horribly. Yes. But this all is very nice. Uh, fit and finish seems really good. Yes. There's really not a whole lot of gapping in the panels. You can notice in some cars right here mm -hmm. where the panels come together, there's not good gapping. Yes. But this all this metal, the polished aluminum, all looks really good on this car. Oh yeah. Um, I'm not sure if I like this. No, it's that's the only thing. Yeah, they kind of look kind of like they're right. not in the right place. Which is like, so like the, where, like the, like the cow like pretty where, much. Where are you going to put it, I right. guess, you know? <laughs> brakes could be upgraded. Yeah. What do you think? It could be upgraded. You you think the yeah. brakes are going to be, oh. need a little bit of look. Hopefully, I'm just hopefully. hit on the brakes. Okay. It's, it's okay. not too bad, but it it's could, okay. it, yeah, it's okay. Not bad. That squeal is that the turbo? Yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Oh, yeah, so you turbo. know they're working. You know, that's the something working. a lot right. of the turbo, some of the turbo motors you, is you don't quiet. necessarily hear the turbos, you can hear those guys. Mm -hmm. That's pretty crazy. So, motor's definitely good in this car. Yes, oh, definitely. I'm really enjoying this motor because it's got tons of low end torque, which should be the case for you know a twin turbo, turbo. six cylinder, should give you tons of bumping on the low end. If somebody was looking for a car in this category, would you recommend this car? Or would you say, well, something else? What no, are your thoughts? I recommend this car. Q50 tw twin turbo. If, if if you like twin turbo, you like speed, you can control, you can control a car, this, this, this will work for you. So definitely a recommendable yeah. car. Anything about this car you didn't know after you bought it that you discovered? Well, that's what it was too. I, didn't, I, I, didn't, I just thought it was a Q, uh, Q, uh, Q50. You just thought it was the 3.7? Yeah, I, I thought it was the 3.7, 3, 3. yeah. which it wasn't, but I didn't know it was twin turbo until I opened the, uh, the hood up. I was like, oh, twin turbo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. It's a nice surprise. Exactly. Oh, there's two more turbos in there. I didn't know. Didn't know that. Like, this car is a viable option against the 3 Series, especially the current 3 Series. Mm -hmm. Because this has a lot of the stuff that the 3 Series used to have that doesn't have anymore. So this, in many respects, for 2017, is probably a better 3 Series than the 3 Series. Mm -hmm. Having driven them, and, and they're not bad per not se, bad, but no. this has more of that feedback, more yeah. of the a performance enthusiast is gonna lean towards one of these over like a 335 or something. Because it's, honestly, they've gotten soft. Yeah. <laughs> and this is an aggressive looking car, very um, robust looking car. And you, you hit it on the spot, it looks like it's fast, but it is fast. Yeah, it's, 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 it's quick, man. And that's yeah. a, to me, it's not so much about your top end speed. Anybody get the freeway and keep their foot in. Right. It's about getting around the corner, taking exactly. off. And that's what having the, having the you know, a turbocharged motor, especially small turbos, it helps you on that low end. Yes, it does. All right, so I'm here with Morris in his Q50A. What year is his car? 2015. 2015. Now, uh, this is different than the other cars because it's got the naturally aspirated 3.7 liter motor. Um, no turbos, no hybrids. Now, Morris, how did you end up with this car? Actually, uh, my mother was interested in this vehicle. So your mother had the vehicle? She Absolutely. Absolutely. And let me guess, you just drove to church? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a 2015, and how many miles does it have on it? 16,000 miles. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna put a couple miles on today. <laughs> okay, so incredibly low mileage car. Um, how did you end up with, obviously your mother had it, she just didn't want it anymore, or what, what happened? She loved the car, but uh, she was re getting ready to retire, so she wanted something... Uh, Even bigger. Bigger, yes. What What is with, I, I believe we had this conversation <laughs> with Christian, but like literally, I don't know what it is with, with 
people as we get older at some point we just decide that we yeah. can't hear very well we can't see very well we're going to buy the biggest car possible Absolutely. with massive blind spots Absolutely. i hope you saw that woman the mercury almost hit me on the yes. way out yes um yeah we had an incident with a mercury that <laughs> it decided to eventually miss my car Absolutely. needless to say um you inherited the car you have to give her some scratch uh, I gave her a little scratch, a little scratch you know, yeah absolutely and so uh, you know she uh, actually we test drove the car together and I actually liked the vehicle yeah and uh, you know I said you know what I wouldn't mind getting uh, you know acquiring a vehicle such as this you know and, yeah well it's comfortable absolutely. nice you know I, I, I like it everything is accessible so um, you were learning the market but you had your space, garage space obviously absolutely okay absolutely and so uh, you know I had it in the uh, in the uh, it was still parked in the garage I use it for my uh, church vehicle <laughs> so your mom just drives church now you're driving to the church yeah I'm driving to church next thing you know you're gonna need a giant car absolutely you're gonna go find a Buick Regal or something that's massive an uh, aircraft carrier a Nimitz class aircraft carrier of automobiles yeah. I'll just stop you before that happens of course well, at least I'll try I don't know we'll see Infinity, why did you rebadge your car? I don't understand because yeah. to me, the G series had a bit of a uh, reputation. It did. And uh, especially trying to get back into the entry uh, level luxury car market, G35 first showed up as a competitor to the 3 series. And, you know, it kind of it got a fair amount of credit. It, it won some, uh, you know, uh, contests in terms of. You know face off of some of the other cars so it, it was you know it kind of set a name for itself then they just changed the name of it and i have trouble keeping up with it but say la vie so how about the interior you know the the, the cabin is 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 is, 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 is spacious um, and what I do like about it, everything is, is accessible. Yep. Uh, you know, you have your uh, navigation here. You have your, uh, your. So you got a big infotainment system uh, here. Yes. You got your navigation above that. Absolutely. Um, good thing Infinity did. It, I, I notice you have a clock here, but yes. they don't actually have a physical clock anymore. Some cars, my Clark, my Chrysler had a physical clock. Oh. Okay. I think it's kind of silly at this point to have an analog clock in the car. Right. Um, but you know, whatever, that's the style. I like that they don't have this in it because that's something, driving the G35, I noticed that clock was really ugly in the car. <laughs> um, and the interior, very similar to Christian's, very nice, very good materials. Yes. I like this metal inlay here, even though yes. it's kind of plastic, it still looks really nice, it feels really nice. Yes. And like I was telling Christian, there is very little gaps. You can tell that the interior is really tight. Yes. You know, I'm getting over 300 horsepower and uh, you know and it and it the, what I do like about it is when you're driving it there's no uh, it, it just get up and go man there, there's no hesitancy in it yeah um, it's not a turbo of course obviously but you can still you know you still got that that, that you still got that punch you still got that kick in it I mean it, 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 can, get, it can get up and go it will go up yeah. to your red line yeah. before it shifts yeah yeah. So yeah. I just tested it. So yeah. yes, so it definitely goes. Yeah. Even without the turbos, and it's being a 3.7, it yeah. is pretty rev happy. It doesn't mind getting up there. Oh man, you know, and uh, you know, it's just a fun car to drive. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, you got the the luxury look to it as well, and. Uh, and you know, for a sports sedan, man, I think it's just awesome. It's just an awesome vehicle, and I really enjoy driving it. The steering feel, the feedback, you get a very good idea of what the front end is doing. Yes. And when you start pushing the car, that kind of stuff is very important. So important. So important. And you know, and and you know, and and you know, and and it's. I just like the stabilization of it. You know. And like you said, if I know what it's doing, I'm comfortable. Yeah. If you only could have one car, period, would this be an option? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, for what you pay for, you, you actually 
you get what you pay for, basically. Yeah. And uh, you don't feel like you've, uh, you, you're not, uh, you're getting ripped off. No, not not a bit. Not All a right. Bit. So I think it's just uh, it's an overall great car, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm comfortable driving it. Yeah. Uh, I just like the overall features and uh, you know just the uh, overall uh, uh, you know uh, features that I'm getting. You gotta think about comfort. If the car beats you up, you will get rid of the car. You, absolutely, absolutely. And I don't get that with this. Yeah, you know? now, this is not punishing at no, all. Not at all, so. You know, it's something that, uh, you know, I plan on keeping. Cool. And so, uh, you know, just the overall uh, performance that I get, it's, it's just, it's awesome. Totally awesome. If somebody was in the market for a luxury car and it only had space for one car, this would be your, your choice? This would definitely be the choice. Or at least consideration. And that's the thing that I kind of, driving Christian cars now, this car, is that it's definitely come a long way from the G35. Because I drove the first generation G35. Yes. I was not impressed with that car at all. I don't understand why it won any awards because it was nothing impressive in my opinion. Yeah. And part of it was, I think the transmission was kind of crap. Yeah. Um, this is almost the same motor. Yeah. And it feels a completely different car. So it's like, if you have a sedan, it's going to be your primary car or your only car. Something like a pass-through or folding seats, that can be a deal breaker, which goes back to convenience. You need a certain threshold of convenience. You need to know what that is because I've had that problem where I got a car that had too many inconveniences to the point where I didn't want it, such as tires. If the tires are really low profile, they're going to be not as soft. So if you have a good suspension, that makes a huge difference. Absolutely. advantages to this natural aspirated motor is that it has less that will probably break on it versus a little bit more complicated. Turbos also need, you know, you have turbochargers, they have to get cooled. So you have a whole separate cooling system, oil fill, uh, oil coolers and things like that because the, the motor has to act differently. Plus you have to have intercooler and all the other stuff to, to condition the air to put it into the, uh, the engine. So this actually has some advantages over the turbo. You might give up a little bit of performance, but you might have some long-term it might be a little easier to maintain. Right. So that's something. I'm kind of surprised that the performance is not that big of a difference. difference. It yeah. really isn't. So I was kind of expecting this to be a little bit slower. And it's a tad in the uh, in the upkeep, but it's negligible, yes. you know. Yes. And we're looking at a five to ten thousand dollar difference in the used market, give or take. Absolutely. You, I, it's kind of. And the interior is identical. Yes. And it's good fit and finish. So, yes. you know, all in all, this is a solid car. Definitely something to uh, consider uh, if you're in this category. Absolutely, I agree. We're in reverse. Backup camera. Hey, so you got, this thing's like loaded, dude. You got backup cameras. And backup sensors. Yeah. And you got like the 360. There's cameras yeah. on this thing. It's like the, uh, yeah. you know, the Evoke when it this came out. This was high tech car in 2015. Dude, this is very well um, appointed. It had every, every box checked. Every box checked. But you know, you sneak up on them like a Prius. Shh, we don't, yeah. we don't talk about it. This is a Prius eater. Sure. <laughs> sure. How did you end up getting this car? Uh, don't cry, because I know it's, yeah, it's a very sad story, but don't cry, because you start crying, I'll, I'll start crying, Curtis. <laughs> I, I needed a uh, new daily driver. After, uh, well, why would you need a new daily driver, after Curtis? After my little BMW Z3 Pride and Joy was destroyed by a uh, careless individual in a parking lot. Yep. the cars that you look at how'd you end up with this car uh, I looked at so many cars I was mostly looking at Corvettes and hot rods mm -hmm. uh, 
<clears throat> some Dodge products. The gas mileage of these vehicles just talked me out of getting one for a daily driver. Oh yeah? And when I, uh, one of the salesmen recommended that I take this car for a drive. And uh, I really wasn't in the market for an Infiniti. Yeah. <clears throat> but once I drove the vehicle, I found it so relaxing to drive and comfortable to drive that uh, it, I don't think I've ever experienced such an effortless vehicle to drive. I find it very effortless. It gets great gas mileage. I'm getting almost 400 miles to a tank. What's your average miles per gallon? 23. Okay. Because I found it interesting. Morris and Christian's car actually were pretty, even though he's got the turbo, they're actually pretty close mileage wise that there wasn't a huge jump from three liter turbo to 3.7. Three hundred and sixty horsepower. How much torque? Joy to drive. You know, so you ended up with this car, which wasn't really your first pick, but it's one of these cars you probably didn't consider, but you drove it, and that changed your mind. That's the thing I always tell people about buying cars: drive the cars because you might be surprised at a car you normally wouldn't consider or you look on paper and not consider it till you drive it and you say, wow, this really is better than I thought it was. And that really, you know, I mean, you're a pretty prudent guy, so you wouldn't buy something sight unseen. But I know a lot of people who say, oh, this car is my car, and they buy it sight unseen. It's like, you didn't even drive the thing? It's kind of absurd in my opinion. If you really, you know, want a car, if you're an enthusiast or anything like that, you want to drive the thing. You won't really notice the good and the bad until you drive with it and, and ideally leave, live with the car for a little bit before you know what's, uh, what's up. Absolutely. Uh, what do you think about the interior? I like the two-tone of the interior. It gives it a higher end look. Uh, it's not just all one monotone color in here. Um, kind of reminds me of my Cor uh, 05 Corvette okay. uh, with the two-tone interior. Uh, I really enjoy the, the stereo system in this. There's yep. no re reason to upgrade it. Um, I like good sound in, in my car, and, and uh, that's important on long drives. Yep. I appreciate the back end of this car more than I appreciate the front end of the car. The, the front end reminds me of so many other four-door sedan sports sedans uh, but the back end looks really nice and it this is kind of a unicorn car being an all-wheel drive yeah now you mentioned the weight of this car which is about <coughs> five thousand pounds 5100 5100 that's pretty hefty for a sedan yeah and a lot of it has to do with the battery the electric the hybrid system now how big is the uh, gasoline motor is it a three liter it's a 3.5 so it's a 3.5 so it's a 3.5 naturally aspirated motor plus a hybrid motor yes which is about 68 horsepower okay so that's where you get most of your uh, that's where you get the extra I guess your instant torque and I noticed you put it your foot down a little bit it kicks down nicely it's a little bit of a different behavior because I noticed Christian's car it kicks down a little bit quicker the torque's a little bit more instant mm -hmm. now Morris's car the 3.7 doesn't have the torque or the kick down as fast but it likes to rev out okay um, Christian's actually motor likes to rev pretty good too but this is a little bit more torquey it's a little more I would it's the power delivery is very similar to like a small block V8 in terms of you have all this really uh, all this torque on the low end right so you really don't have to rev it out because you get that instant torque that's all due to the hybrid motor one thing i do notice is that it has a, a little bit of lag in between the electric motor yeah. and the gas motor and sometimes you can't even tell that the gas motor shuts off oh yeah having a uh, you know a, a c6 vet um, how does that compare to this in terms of handling dynamics uh, obviously the vets a 
purebred sports car, and this is a sports sedan. Right. You feel like you're giving you're giving much up in this car? I uh, power wise, no. Power okay. wise, I think they're they're very close. It, the weight of this car changes the dynamic enough yeah. that the two aren't really comparable yeah. to me. Uh, the Corvette, I felt like I was in a glove when I was in that car. This car, I feel like I'm a little loose and I can hang out. I'm just hanging out in it. What about the wheels? Because the wheels are larger wheels. Yeah, than they're the 20 other cars. Inch, uh, so the 20s. 20s on that. No, I really like those. They're not run flats, I don't believe. Okay. Does it have a spare? No. No spare. Because of the hybrid battery pack. Yep. And the hybrid battery pack basically lives in the trunk? Yes. And it shortens the trunk. Uh, you're about one golf bag in the back of the trunk. Versus two. Versus two in the... And there's no pass-through? No pass-through. See, that's, that's one of the things that... Yep. You know, it's one of these trade-offs, and, yep. and that's why I talk about. Here we go. Oh, yeah. The thing about this is you don't feel like you're going fast at all. No. Even with the torque, you don't feel like you're going fast at all. That's deceptive, you know? You get no wheel spin. Nope. You get nothing a matter of fact as soon as one of the wheels starts to spin that's when the front ones kick in yeah and you don't really hear the motor till you get about five and a half this is more of a business class car versus something like you know muscle car or vet or, or sports car right. it doesn't quite give you that visceral feedback the, uh, the other side of that is a very livable car right Absolutely. You have a car like a like a GT3 or something that beats you up. Would you consider if you had one car in your garage, would this be in the running to be one car? For instance, you meet somebody and they're like, "Hey, I'm gonna," you know. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I'm very satisfied with this car. Um, as far as uh, they're not as satisfied with theirs, but <laughs> just pulled right out in front of me. I this could live with good. this car. Just as the only car. This car. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. I like it that much. I, I was surprised that I liked it that much. I liked it so much after I test drove it that I couldn't take my mind off of it even after I went and drove other cars. It's and, good sign. Uh, and four days later, I felt compelled to go back and see if it was still there. And it was? <laughs> and and it was. And you bought it? And it was. And someone was standing right behind me to buy it if I backed out. great gas mileage and it gives me plenty when I ask for plenty. There you go. <laughs> How long do you plan on keeping this car? Three to four years. At least three to four years? Yeah. Until you're getting something Then we'll else, get the dream or, car. Then you're going to get the dream car. Okay, we'll so this the is the in-betweener for now. Yeah, this I'm not even going to pay this off. And we're yeah. just going to take it right I now. hear you. As soon as the extended warranty runs out, it goes right back. There you go. <laughs> This thing, I, that, I really enjoy all the tech. In it. Yeah. Tech with a warranty. Yeah. Tech with a warranty. All right, guys, this is the conclusion. Having driven all three of these cars, it's kind of interesting. Um, I didn't know what to expect, so I'm going to break it down the easiest way possible. We'll start with something very basic, aesthetics. These three cars are nearly identical. Though Curtis's car, with the Q50S, does have several black treatments where there is chrome on the other two cars, which does give it a little bit of an aesthetic advantage, as well as the 20 inch wheels, which we'll get to a little bit later. Now, the interiors are nearly identical. I will give props. I do like the aluminum interior versus the wood trim. That's a personal thing. I've never liked wood trim, yet they're very popular, so. Curtis loses some points there with uh, a wood trim. That being said, um, aesthetically, this basically even. Uh, the cars all look good. 
slight advantage of the Q50, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Now, drivetrain. This is one of the main reasons I wanted these three cars, because I was expecting a very different drivetrain experience, and I did get one. Uh, from the get-go, I assumed Christian's car, being the three-liter twin-turbo, would be the best all-around drivetrain. But having driven Morris's car as well as Curtis's car, I have some different thoughts about the drivetrain. On one hand, Morris's 3.7 in the Q50A is not a... Mm, it's not the fanciest of motors, but when you rev it up, it sounds really good. It's the best sounding motor in the group, and it's the most gratifying once you rev it up. Rather high, needless to say, which is interesting because most larger displacement six cylinders don't really rev too terribly well, but this engine loves to rev. Now, Christian's car, even though it has less overall horsepower, it has better low end torque and has the fastest kick down of these cars. So if you need to pass, you need power on demand, Christian's car actually has a slight advantage. It has the turbo line, which is kind of cool, but the motor in the 3.7 sounds better. Unfortunately, Curtis's car, a little bit of a letdown in terms of noise, but what it does do when it does kick down, which takes a minute, and the hybrid motor kicks in, it has a ton of power. The mid-range is awesome on this car once it gets going. And that leads us to brakes, because once Curtis's car gets going, then you have to stop it, hence the 20-inch wheels. The car is very heavy, and it's not an easy car to stop. So. The two non-hybrid cars have a massive advantage in braking. So Curtis's car can get into trouble faster than it can get out of trouble, so to speak. The handling, pretty much an even, even brake. Um, you don't really notice the extra weight that Curtis's car has, which is kind of a good thing because it does have a lot of weight. But the handling is pretty much even. It's very responsive, very controllable, very predictable, and you get a lot of chassis feedback and a lot of steering feedback, which is really good because there's many cars in this category that suffer from good steering feel. Okay, for the final category, we're going to talk about usability, practicality. Uh, first of all, fuel economy. That's a big thing everyone's worried about. Curtis's car easily wins this with the hybrid drivetrain. The problem with the hybrid drivetrain though is that you're going to want a warranty because there's a lot of moving parts in that. Curtis has a warranty, smart on, good on him, but keep in mind that with more complicated drivetrain you have more potential for problems. Morris's car on the other hand is the least mechanically complicated with the 3.7 naturally aspirated. Christian's car is kind of in between. Now Christian gets better fuel economy than Morris. Morris easily has the worst fuel economy out of these three cars, which is everyone kind of knows that about the 3.7 motor. Also though, the practicality kind of gets back because Morris's car as well as Christian's car does have a pass-through. Curtis's car, because of where they located the batteries, does not have a pass-through. It also is lacking a um, sizable trunk. Most of the batteries and part of the hybrid are basically behind the, the back seat, which eats up the trunk space. So even though Curtis's car has all-wheel drive, which is good for snow, you also lose the ability to really put skis in the car versus Christian or uh, Morris's car. Not that you want to take a rear wheel drive car in the snow. So in many, I'm going to say at the end of the day, I can't pick one. This is truly a rock, paper, scissor comparison. Each one of these cars have merits. They have pluses, they have minuses. And it really just depends on how you want to use your car. If you want a everyday driver, I would suggest just the hybrid or the twin turbo. If you have a car that's just a special occasion car, weekend car, or even a track car, 3.7 all the way. Really like that motor, but it's just not necessarily that practical. So, when all is said and done, if you're looking at an entry-level luxury sedan, I would consider the Q50. It might just surprise you. Surprise me. Alright, ready when you are. Hi, I'm Curtis and this is my 2015 Cubrid <laughs> <laughs> Rubik's Cube. Yeah, this is my Rubik's Cube. Let's try this again. Hi, my name's Curtis. This is my 2015 
Q Infinity. <laughs> okay. One okay. Infinity Q50A. So, <laughs> hi, my name's Morris. Hi. My name is Okay, Morris. stop, stop. I'm, when I'm talking, you can't talk at the same time because I'll record everything. So let's. Hi, I'm Curtis, and this is my 2015 Q-Finity 5. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's yeah, hard. Just okay. So, Go ahead, take some more points for me. So Curtis loses another point because he has a bad attitude. Um, that being said, and they're, they're laughing. Hi, my name's Curtis, and this is my 2015 Q Infinity. You guys need to really be quiet. I'm not kidding, because you're gonna you're up you're getting our talent upset. Hi, I'm Morris. This is my 2015 Infinity QA. All right, it's a Q50A, not QA. Yeah. All right, let's do that. I'll be with the fry basket over here. Be on that side. You can. You do whatever you want to do, guys. We're gonna take your car out for a ride. Go for it. Have fun. Just. Fill up the gas tank while you're at it. <laughs> 